Good day, good day, Bashana, and once again, your favorite uncle is with you, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to prove identities. We're looking at trigonometry for grade 11, so if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure that you're part of the family, and let's get right into our lesson. Now, um, ladies and gents, whenever you're working with proving of identities, right, the one thing that I want you to always remember is that you're going to work with the right-hand side and the left hand side separately okay so you are not going to be transposing anything all right so you are going to be working with the left hand side and the right hand side uh, separately right so the second thing the one thing that you need to remember is to always change everything into sine and cos okay so, so the first cost of action so change everything into sine and cos. Okay, right. Now, what do I mean by that? Uh, to sine of uh, the angle or cos of the angle. So you might have identities such as, or rather, um, uh, you know, uh, if you've got the 10 of theta, what do you now convert that to? You're going to convert that to sine of theta divided by cosine of theta. So the 10 of any angle can be converted to this. Now, some of you may not necessarily go through this. I just want to turn this off. Right, so some of you may not necessarily go through this. Right, but in some instances, we do use some trig ratios like the sec of uh, any angle. So the sec of any angle is one over the cosine of that angle. We call this inverse. Uh, identities right so they are going to be inverses so in this case we also have the cosec of any angle and that will give us one over um the sine okay let me just write that nicely one over the sine of that angle so anytime that you've got anything that is either not sine or cos you're going to convert it to that now thirdly you've got one very important, um, you know, uh, identity that we use. These are our square identities. So we say that the sine squared of any angle plus the cosine squared of that angle is equal to one. Now, ladies and gents, I just want you to note this very carefully. Anytime that you've got this identity obviously you are, go you are going to equate that to one. However, there are instances when we might have sine squared of the angle and you will be required to convert that to one minus the cos squared of that angle. So all I've just done is take cosine squared to the other side. And so now you know that sine squared of that angle will be one minus cos squared of the angle. Now, very important relationship that I want you to note. I want you to note that this can also be the difference of two squares or the difference of squares, right? And how do you factorize the difference of squares? You've got one plus the cos of A and one minus uh, the cosine uh, of A. So remember that when you've got the difference of squares, when you factorize it, you might require at times uh, to factorize it. And you will see uh, specific instances where you will be able to do that. I've got that as part of my exercises that we're going to do in the next videos. Right. So now what we are going to do is uh, also when you've got the cos squared of any angle, that may we may need at times to write it as one minus the sine squared of that angle. And once again, you do note that this can be written as the difference of squares, uh, or rather it is the difference of squares and can therefore be factorized in this manner. All right, now, very important for us to note. Okay, so um, in this case, I want you to note the fourth thing that we may need to do. There are instances where we might not have or we have changed everything into sine and cos and we've got square identities or we don't. But when we've got fractions, and please, ladies and gents, I want you to listen to this very carefully. Right. So when we, we are dealing with fractions, we always will add fractions. Okay. So we always add fractions. And we know when we're adding fractions, we need to find what we call the, the lowest common 
denominator, our LCD. Now, let me make an example with that. So if I've got different fractions, say, for instance, uh, I've got, let's say, 10 of theta uh, plus cos of theta, right? Now, in this case, you might find, we said the first thing that you'll need to do, change everything into sine and cos. We know 10 becomes sine theta over cos theta, right? Uh, theta plus cos of theta. Now, you'll notice, now I've got two fractions in this case, right? Of course, we can always write cos theta as cos theta over 1. So what would we need to do? Let's add the fraction. So we're going to say this is going to be, well, our LCD is cos of theta. Now, how you are going to add the numerator is that what you simply do is you multiply both of your fractions by the LCD. So I'm going to say cos theta, right? But I'm going to also multiply this by cos of theta. Now, notice in the first one, the cos theta and the cos theta cancel out, right? And so what am I left with? I'm left with sine theta. So which means on my numerator, I am simply going to have the sine of theta, right? And for the next one, well, I've got cos one, uh, cos theta over 1 times cos theta over 1. So in that case, when I multiply them together, I've got cos squared of theta. Now I've converted this into one fraction. Okay, so please remember, this is how we deal with fractions. Let me just take another example with this. Okay, so suppose that I've got, let's say, uh, cos theta. And uh, now let me use a different cos alpha over sine of alpha and I've got one plus the cos of alpha. Right, once again, these are two fractions, so we're going to add them together. What is our LCD? Well, we're going to take the product of the two. So our LCD in this case is sine of alpha, sorry, that should be alpha, sine alpha cos of alpha because we've got different things on our uh, on our denominator. So in this case, what am I going to do? That's our LCD. So I'm going to multiply both of my fractions, right, with my LCD, cos of alpha, but I'll do the same on this one, at sine of alpha, cos of alpha, right. So what I actually will have in this case is that, look, the sine alpha there will cancel the sine alpha. So I've got cos alpha multiplied by cos alpha. So my fraction will have, the LCD will be at the denominator, sine alpha times cos alpha, right? So I've got now cos alpha times cos alpha, which will give me cos squared of alpha plus, remember that's the sign that I've got in between. And now I know that when I, multiply those two cos and cos cancel and I've got one times sine alpha and that will be sine alpha. So please always make it a point that you add fractions together. Well, uh, almost done with this before we start with some exercises. So if you look at this, what we are going to do is we are now going to say, right, um, if we've done all of this, We've added all the fractions together. Sometimes we may need to factorize, okay? So sometimes we may need to factorize. What do I mean by that? Right, so sometimes when we've got identities, let's say we've got cos squared of theta plus 2 sine theta cos theta, right? In order for us to prove identities at times, we may require to factorize. And if you look at this, what do I have here? Well, in both my terms, I've got cos of theta, so I can factorize by taking out cos of theta um, out. In this case, I've got cos theta plus 2 sine of theta. And so that is what uh, I have um, as my answer, right? Um, some, in some instances, right, so if I look at this, uh, as I said to you, so suppose that you've got as 2 sine, okay, 2 sine squared of theta plus, or in fact, let me say sine squared of theta plus 2 sine theta plus 1, 
right? Now, at times you might need to notice that we've got a quadratic expression, right? So if you look at this, if we said let sine theta be equal to k, so what does that mean? It means I've got k squared plus 2k plus 1. And obviously, if I were to factorize, this would be k plus 1 into k plus 1. And so if I were to rewrite it in terms of sine theta, that is sine theta plus 1 into sine of theta plus 1. So sometimes it is very necessary for us to realize when it is that we need to factorize. All right, ladies and gents, so what I would like for us to do, right, is to take a couple of examples. I'm going to do that in the next video, right? Uh, so we are going to do that. Um, but for now, I want you guys to really chew on this and see this is the way that we look at identities. Now, in my next video, I am going to be taking these examples, right? I'm going to start with example one and two and follow on with the rest of them in different videos. But ultimately, when we are done, we are going to be able to apply uh, uh, the proving of identities. But for now, I'll see you guys next time in the next video. Shab shab.